up, people? This is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. And use logic and use reason and realize that religion is fake. What's up, people? I came here to do a quick video uh, to get your heads up uh, under the circumstances. Uh, my birthday just passed recently. And so my mother and my grandmother have come to visit me. So, so they're downstairs, I'm downstairs. My mom has totally commandeered my house, took over everything basically. So right now they went out to dinner with my son and I had a minute or two, you know, a little bit of time to make a video. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this video, let everybody know where I was. I had other videos ready to drop. But the birthday came up and they came through and, and and don't get it wrong, I am so happy to see my mother and my grandmother. Don't get that twisted at all. At my age, I'm happy to have my mother and my grandmother. So I'm happy about it. But they are both Christians, you know, old school. So I told you before, I'm not going to do these videos when they're around. Besides that, I couldn't even get the couch when they're around. So. It is what it is. It's a matter of chain of command. They both outrank me. It's respect. Always will be respect for my mother and my grandmother. That's how our family works. Respect. So for this video, I just wanted to drop, drop a few things on you right quick just to think about. I know when I deal with the Christian apologists especially, they like to act like they have a monopoly on morality. They like to act like only Christians can read the Bible and understand it. You know, these are the things that they seem to want to think. As if anyone can't pick up a book and read it. Oh, but the Bible is spiritual, so you wouldn't understand it. That's, that's simply not the case. The Bible is a book of books. And if you want to understand it, just read it. When you read it and nobody bothered you, you would understand the book is fiction. The book starts out as fiction. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is a story of fiction. Off the first verse of the book. Who was there to witness this? Nobody. But what God told this person, that's hearsay. We don't know who wrote it. We know nothing about the people that wrote the Bible. It's just a book. It's not spiritual. It's just a book. That's it, simple and plain. Now watch some of the contradictions that they have in their thinking. They will tell you that you can't understand the Bible unless you have the Holy Spirit. But in order to have the Holy Spirit, you have to be born again. So why pass out tracts with Bible verses in them to unsaved people if they're not going to understand what's in those tracts? Because you just said that the carnal mind can't understand things of the spirit. But yet you pass out tracts with verses from the Bible in these tracts. That's a contradiction. You say that the carnal mind can't understand things of the spirit, yet you want to invite people to church. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, then they wouldn't understand what the Holy Spirit was saying. It's like you can't have it both ways. If, if God couldn't talk to sinners, then he would have never talked to anyone. He wouldn't have talked to anyone if he can't talk to sinners. He wouldn't have told Adam and Eve to even leave the garden if he couldn't talk to sinners. He wouldn't have talked to Abraham and made a covenant with him. He wouldn't have given Noah instructions on how to build this ark. 
We can go down the list. He wouldn't have talked to Moses. He, he wouldn't have had these prophets. Because according to what the Christians are saying, all of these people were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So how could he have talked to them if God doesn't talk to sinners? So you have a discrepancy there. So evidently, either one, he does talk to sinners, or two, you are lying. Because as a Christian, how would you have even known what God was saying as a non-believer when you were a non-believer it makes no sense so somewhere in here God would have had to have talked to sinners to have a whole book written if if the, let's, let's go by the whole Bible narrative that a man of God wrote Genesis and he told you had to say, yeah, well, God told this person, you know, in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. He told them, he said, let there be light. He told them. So, but Jesus didn't come till later. So this would clearly mean that God was talking to a sinner, right? Talking to a sinner. So the theology doesn't line up with the, if it was real, the reality of what you're saying. You want to invite non-believers to church. You want to give non-believers tracks from, you know, the church tracks. You, you want to evangelize to non-believers. And I know they'll use that one. Well, it says that, you know, uh, how can they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear unless, you know, somebody was sick? all of that nonsense but even if that was the case how would they understand if they didn't have the Holy Spirit in the Christian world holy having the Holy Spirit and understanding what the Holy Spirit means understanding understanding having the Holy Spirit just means you agree with all of the Christian doctrine you agree with when the pastor says this and you yell amen preach pastor. It just means you agree with all of the Christian doctrine. That's what having the Holy Spirit is. Somebody explains you something, you say, oh, okay, now I get it. That That's what having the Holy Spirit is. That's what really, that's all it is. As for it being the actual Holy Spirit, not the case. Not the case. We've seen too many incidents where that's not the case. The Holy Spirit didn't give you heads up on anything. When, when tragedy was coming, he didn't give you a, head, a, a heads up on it and told you, hey, this is about to happen. He didn't tell you anything. He didn't give you no stock tips. He told you nothing. He only tells you what some man says. If he's only telling you what some man says, that's not a Holy Spirit. He's talking to you in your head. But then he's not talking to you in your head when you get around the pastor. None of this makes any sense. And then the Christians act like they have a monopoly on morality. What are you basing, what are you basing your morality on? Like you have to have something you're basing your morality on. Meaning for them, it has to be a God. And not just any God, because they don't mean Allah. They don't mean Shiva. You know, they don't mean Osiris. They don't mean Horus. They know what they mean when they say a God is their God. They act like the Ten Commandments was the first time somebody heard about you shouldn't kill somebody. This book that's came so late, all of a sudden, now we got morality. Well, how do you know what's good and how do you know what's evil? Because you don't believe in God, so you don't have a standard of morality. This is the nonsense that they spew, trying to win arguments, trying to win debates by acting like they can control the narrative by acting like their God is the reason why all of a sudden we know what's right and what's wrong. But in your own book, right there in Genesis, chapter 3, when the serpent was talking to the woman about eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they had no knowledge of good and evil. Yet again, God was withholding knowledge. And why was he withholding the knowledge? Because according to the text, he was withholding this knowledge because they would be like gods. They would be like God, really. So he's withholding knowledge. But then later tells you, and all you're getting, get understanding and and uh, you know, all he tell you all later, you know, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You was the one holding back the knowledge. Then when they got the knowledge, you punished them. So if we as uh, non-believers don't know what's good and what's bad, when Adam and Eve ate from the fruit, or ate from the, ate the fruit from the tree, and then their eyes were opened and they knew good from bad. So, somebody's lying, yet again. Somebody's lying. Either the Bible's lying, and Adam and Eve didn't know good from evil because they had no moral standard, which they passed down that sin to, supposedly, to us. So, if they passed that down, then we'd also know good from evil. And it doesn't take a God to know that. So what is your standard? Well, I guess if Adam sinned and it passed down to us, then we knew. And that was the crime. The crime was that now man knows good from evil. That was the crime. They know good from evil. Now the Christians today, now you, you don't know what's good. You don't know what's evil. But according to your book, Adam and Eve knew because they ate the fruit. They disobeyed and sin came in. Somehow, when you got sin, you got to have sin to know good from evil. And according to them, we all got sin, so I guess we all have knowledge of what's good and what's evil. How do you know what's good and what's evil? Well, in every county you live in or every city you live in, they have laws. So even if you don't have a God, you have a law of the land. And the Bible doesn't cover uh, speeding. The Bible doesn't cover, uh, you know, internet crimes. So a lot of things the Bible doesn't cover that we deal with today. So how do we deal with it? How do we know this good from wrong? Or yeah, yeah, the good from wrong. How, how do we know then? If, if the Bible doesn't, doesn't tell us these things. Hmm. Somehow we must know. Maybe it's just in us. And then I heard a Christian trying to win a debate flip-flop. One of the apologists going to flip-flop. First you say, you know, you, do, you have no objective morality. They go to all this nonsense. Now you don't, you don't have no morality because you don't believe in their God. And then when he wanted to win the argument, he said, they asked, well, what about people who don't, who don't, don't, haven't read the Bible, don't know about Jesus or God, none of that stuff? Well, there is a universal morality. Now, which is it, homeboy? Either at first you say they don't know when you want to win the argument this way, then you flip it and you're going to say there's a universal, a universal morality. Which is it? They will flip-flop. They will lie to try to win an argument. And if they feel they can't win the argument, they'll just be silent. You won't hear from them because they have nothing to say. They don't want to get checkmated. So rather than be checkmated, they'll be quiet. But quick, they want to talk to you about some philosophy. Well, philosophically speaking, like I told a guy, I wanted to apologize, he's a quack. I'm gonna, gonna talk about all that now. So we, we don't need philosophy to prove if a person is, is real or not. We don't need more uh, no, philosophy to prove the identity of a person. You don't go to the DMV and get philosophical. They want to know do you have your paperwork. The FBI ain't getting philosophical when they're looking for the most wanted. They got a picture of them. They're not sitting around guessing if this person exists or not, believing that this fugitive exists. If somebody shot up a place in a mass shooting, they don't sit around 
believing did the person do it or do they even exist? No, there is a suspect. Somebody shot up the place. And we need to find the identity of this person. Well, they have no identity because according to... Uh, they, nobody wants to hear this nonsense until you come into the religious world where they can't prove something because they don't have it. It's equivalent to if you go to a show and, and the headliner isn't there. So the opening act has come out the opening act comes out entertained, you know, people still getting situated in their seats. They still coming in. You know, they 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 like they, they know that the show really don't start till the headliner come on. Now, the the, the next act come on and everybody's kind of situated because they're waiting for the headliner. And the people backstage are like, yo, the headliner's not here. Well, buy some time. Had a DJ come out there and cut it up and scratch it up and play some old school songs, get everybody hyped with the old school songs and, and get the crowd involved in it. Oh, we're getting ready for the headliner and yeah, oh, oh, this and that, remember this, remember that. They just talking with them, talking with them. But, but after a while, the crowd is like, all right, come on, man. Bring them out. Yeah, that was all good and dead. We didn't pay for that, though. We paid to see the headliner. But they know the headliner's not there, so they're killing time till the headliner gets there. But the difference is, in reality, the headliner can show up late. Or the headliner cannot show, but people know the headliner exists. The difference with God is they're doing the same thing, but the headliner will never show up. The headliner is not real. The headliner cannot show up. So all they can do is continue to stall. I've given you proof. I must have missed it. What, what was the proof? So you just don't want to accept the proof that I gave you. You didn't, you didn't give me any, what was the proof? What proof? You breathe air but you can't see the air. And who says we have to see the air to know the air is real? We have, we have the compounds for, for oxygen and, and for carbon dioxide and for nitrogen. We have, we have this. We, we see air knock people over, knock houses over, destroy subdivisions. We see air do this. We see air blowing up balloons. We see it. We see planes, airplanes. They call them jets because they got turbines. Airplanes flying through the air. If there's no air, they would crash. They have nothing to float on. Why would you compare air to God? Because you can't see air? That's nonsense. But then when you get hot, you'll cut the fan on. What is the, what is the fan blowing? That's cooling you off. Air. When you cut on the air conditioner, nobody's guessing that when they walk in, oh, out of the heat and come into that cooled room. They know that's the air conditioner. The air has been cooled. Why would you compare air that no one disagrees exists because we all benefit from it with a God that, that most people don't care about? don't need, does nothing, won't show up ever. Like that's a legitimate argument. That's like saying, well, bacteria, you don't see bacteria, you don't see viruses, but we feel the effects of them when they get in your body and they're bad. We see the effects of viruses and bacteria, even though we can't see them with the naked eye, they can be seen. A lot of things you can't see with the naked eye, they still exist. But God, on the other hand, he's a no-show. He will always be the headliner that never shows up. And all these Christian apologists can do is keep DJing and 
cutting and scratching and rapping and stalling the crowd. He's coming back. He's coming back one day. He's coming back. I'm, I'm telling you, these are the last days. He's coming back. He's Please believe me, he's coming back. He came back yet. Yeah, I don't care what happens in the last days. He hasn't come back, and he's not going to come back. He ain't never came to come back. The God doesn't exist. The headliner that does not exist. But the crazy part is, it's a headline. They can, they can sell them tickets, though. What's that guy's name? Uh, that crook pastor. And they, they investigated him. Had him had, they got the whole video where they're like asking him questions. And he had a New Year's uh, thing where he said Jesus was going to show up. And sold all these tickets. And he was like, I'm serious, Jesus is going to show up. And everybody waiting for Jesus to show up. And after, after the thing was over, he was like, y'all missed him. He did show up and you missed him. Collected their money, stupid. He showed up, you missed him. How everybody miss him? Everybody missed him, but you? He didn't show up. If God could show up to two people at the same time and get the same message, it'd be amazing. But he can't. You can't when you don't exist. Bottom line. My goodness. They are, they will, these Christians will. You don't understand the Bible. You can't. No, you're, you're reading it from the carnal mind. You don't understand it. And, and, and it's funny how when you read what it says, they'll always tell you that's not what it means. You're reading it out of context. That's not what it means. So why have a whole book that is so important for people's souls to be saved, to not perish forever, and God going to play games by saying what he doesn't mean? You know, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, be removed, and it shall be uprooted and cast into the sea. Well, what he meant was, and basically it said everything Jesus said was a parable. So if everything he said was a parable, then why not, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If, then that must be a parable as well. That's not what it really meant. The story about uh, Lazarus dying and going into the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man dying and he was on the other side where he was in torment. And they'll say, oh, that was real. Was it? Because the Bible said he taught in parables. So that means the things Jesus said, nothing meant what it, nothing meant what he said. And if that was the case and everything was just a lesson, then even he himself wasn't even a Messiah. I mean, he didn't meet the criteria anyway. He was a bastard child. He wasn't from the line of David. The two genealogies in Matthew and Luke both say they talk about Joseph. They don't say they don't say Mary. And I know they'll come back and say, oh well, this one meant it meant uh the father of Mary. That ain't what it says. It should it should say what it means and mean what it says. It doesn't say that. So according to these, I mean Jesus didn't defeat Rome. He wasn't a general. I'm going to come back, and when I come back, I'm going to defeat him. And then when he returned, so-called returned from the grave in all the other books except Mark. Oh, my bad, he did return to Mark after they rewrote it, my bad. Because uh, Mark was in Mark 16, uh, was it 10 or 9 on through or 10 on through. They added that later. You got any footnotes in your Bible, go read the footnotes to tell you 
you know, this was added later or it's not in earlier versions. They got like three different endings for Mark. Why can it be? How can this be the truth when you and, and your eternal soul is on the line, but the thing has three different endings? You choose your own adventure book. Come on, man. This, this makes no sense. But this is my point. So Jesus, so-called, returns from the dead, and he doesn't look like himself. Nobody recognizes his appearance. No one. Everybody would stand offish from the guy because no one recognized his appearance. So couldn't this mean it wasn't him and it was could have been one of his followers acting like he was the resurrected Jesus? Mary, Mary Magdalene loved the man. Some even believe that was his, his wife. She's talking to the she supposed was the gardener asking where did you bury him and, and he says Mary and she's like oh it's him the disciples they see him afar off don't notice him they eating with eating fish with the man and still kind of stand off because none of them they didn't recognize him nobody recognized his appearance so how do you know this wasn't an imposter Someone acting just like he did. Same mannerism, like we see when somebody do a movie. Somebody acting like Notorious B.I.G. Ooh, those are his mannerisms. They, they, act, they, they imitate people. They imitate Barack Obama. They imitate uh, Richard Nixon. They imitate these people to a T. He like, dang, it sound just like him act just like them, same mannerisms, but it's not the same person. They imitate Michael Jackson, but they're not Michael Jackson. So why wouldn't you think somebody was imitating Jesus, which would make more sense because nobody comes back after being dead for three days. Oh, and Rome hid his body. Rome wouldn't have had to hide his body because he would have been thrown in a unmarked grave with everybody else who was crucified. That's part of the degradation of the crucifixion. You don't, first you, you, you they keep you on display, but in Jesus' story, oh, you got to come down before the Sabbath. Do you really think Rome cared, cared about these nomads, the Israelites, they would have cared? Pontius Pilate really would have cared what they had to say after two other occasions coming into Jerusalem. He crucified hundreds. On the Passover, Pontius Pilate didn't care about these people. It is believed he was removed because he was just so violent towards the people. But now all of a sudden they're going to come to him and if you be a friend of this man, then that means you're an enemy of Caesar. You really think they would have came and piled like that's that's like you believing that that one of the North Korean or the North Korean people gonna come at Kim Jong Un and 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 threaten him and he gonna give in to it. Like you really think Hitler was gonna back down because some Jews said something. Pontius Pilate would not have backed down at all. He wouldn't have broken any rules like taking the man off the cross early because people thought he was special. Everybody thinks somebody be special on the cross. But they're going to let the birds eat on your body, let everybody, you're going to hang there and decay. They're going to do all of that and they're going to take you off the cross and throw you in an unmarked grave with everybody else. So where'd you bury him? He's in a grave, so who cares? He's, nobody cares. Oh, but he got a tomb of his own. He got his own special tomb that none of the people saw him in. There's supposed to be two people that actually dressed him. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. So, oh, the empty tomb, empty tomb. That's proof. Proof of what? That the tomb is empty? 
So if I walk into an empty room, that means Jesus was just in that room because the room was empty. I just came out like, damn, Jesus ain't in this room. Jesus was just in here and I came in here. Nobody was in the room. That proved Jesus was in here and left the room. Empty tomb. Empty tomb proves nothing. And the Jesus shows up and nobody recognizes this cat. And then he floats off into the cloud. Come on, man. Come on. He floats off into the clouds. There ain't nobody trying to hear that crap. So look, people, I just want to drop this on y'all. But I still had other videos to drop. I still ain't got around to dropping them yet because so much been going on when my birthday came around. So people, oh, don't forget... Hit the like button on the video. If you're watching the video, I should have said at the beginning, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Please hit the like button. And subscribe. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. Share the videos, please. Share them somewhere. Share them on your Facebook group, on your Twitter. Share them with your friends. Share them on Reddit. I don't care what you share them on. Share them somewhere. Let somebody else see it. And I'll tell you this too, I, I, one thing I'm not thinking about is uh, when the Christian apologists want to, oh, you taught this, but it wasn't right. You know how much stuff y'all teach is not right? So much stuff y'all teach is not right. And like, the, uh, if y'all seen that video I had uh, on uh, Pianca's uh, page, Pianca uh, Patal, with uh, Leandre, what did he, he call him something, Mr. Common Sense, Reality, something, I don't know, and, and we were supposed to, it wasn't no debate, it was just me talking, and this guy is so arrogant, the young boy, gotta show books in his background when he's talking, oh, he, he's gotta out-talk you, uh, use his so supposed intelligence to belittle you. He's going to talk down on you the whole time. If you play his game. I, for one, don't play his game. But but it, it was, what's crazy is he doesn't see you're a Christian and you have arrogance. Well, what happened to all that pride go up before fall? And you know, the things about how God doesn't like arrogance. And then all he does is flaunts arrogance. You, 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 you're not. You shouldn't even be in the same conversation with me. You don't have the intelligence to be in the same conversation with me. Who are you teaching like this? Who are you teaching? Who are you convincing? Who? Your intelligence has become your downfall, and you can't even see it. Because you think you're so smart. A smart dummy. A smart dummy. How could you do all of that reading and researching and still believe the Bible is historical? You have missed the mark. You've missed it. You ain't even looking at the mark. You kicking a field goal the other way. Ain't no way you could do all that, all that studying and researching on everything out of all these books. And you mean to tell me nothing in them books told you that that Bible was, was full of crap? I, I, it's hard for me to respect your so-called intelligence when, you, when you're backing the Bible. Knowing you have no proof. So when I deal with them, I ain't going into the books on you. I'm going to drag your ass into real life. Get out them damn books and come on into real life. Right life. Right life don't want reality. No facts. Don't want facts. I need pseudo, pseudo science. They don't want to do that. These apologists, all they want to do is sit around in their own little bubble lying to each other. 
amen in each other. Yeah, yeah, this, amen. And the way he walked on the water was because the way he shuffled his feet. He shuffled his feet so that way the water, amen. They sit around just amen in each other. Anybody come against them now, all of a sudden, oh, oh, you've been debunked. You've been debunked. Because the Bible says, smart dummies. Wasted intelligence on fairy tales and myths. Smart dummies. Y'all can't even respect, I can't respect your gangster. Because you're defending the Bible. I know when I, when I was in it, I didn't research the way I, if I had researched the way I did when I got out, I wouldn't have been in so long. But you mean to tell me you read all of this stuff and still cling into the Bible? Smart dummies. You know can't nobody part no Red Sea. Killing all the firstborn, just knowing who the firstborn was. I mean, woo, religion is a hell of a drug. Religion is a hell of a drug. It, it gets smart people. Turns smart people into dummies. And then the thing is, when he gets to talking and explaining and think he's like, he think he eating it up. Oh, I'm just on, I'm on fire. Like the old NBA jams, on fire. Just everything you shooting is, you shooting half court on fire. And he's sitting around thinking he on fire. And we sitting around looking like, you big dummy. Wow, you look stupid. Hey, somebody can watch how stupid he looks. Wow, this guy really looks stupid. All of them got degrees. Some of them got degrees. And look stupid. Stupid. Don't want to face reality that you can't use none of this religious crap in the real world. Stupid. Mm. Jesus ain't changing your interest rate. He ain't up in your credit. None of that mess. You gonna do all that. Won't he do it? No, he won't. You will. Smart dummies. Well, let me go ahead and end this video now. I know they'll be back soon. I don't want to put something up. Uh, let y'all know I was still here. Just let you know what was going on. Again, like the videos. Like the videos. Subscribe. Share. And uh, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next video. I don't know when my mom and grandma are leaving. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh... But I'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care out there. Peace.